Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 28. In this video we're going to learn about scientific notation. So one immediate application of integer exponents is scientific notation. This will make it more convenient to write really large or really small numbers. So before we get into scientific notation, I want to review some things from pre-algebra. So the first thing is that when multiplying by 10, or 10 raised to a whole number 1 or larger, the decimal point moves right one place for each zero in the power of 10. So for example, if I take, let's say, the number 5, and I was to multiply 5 by, let's say, 100. Well, this is equal to, I could just write 5 as 5.0, and I could move this decimal point one place to the right for every zero in this power of 10. So there's two zeros here, two zeros, so this would go one, put another zero in there, two places to the right, and we'd end up with the number 500. And we all know five times 100 is 500, but that's kind of another way you can do it. And you could also think about this as, let's say five times, I don't know, let's say we had 10,000. So there's one, two, three, four zeros. So four zeros. So again, I could put equals 5.0, and I could move this decimal point one, two, three, four places to the right, and I would end up with 50,000, right? So five times 10,000 is 50,000. I could keep doing this. Let's do one more. Let's say we had five times one million. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. So I could put a five here, point zero, and I'm gonna move this six places to the right. So let me go ahead and add one, two, three, four, five zeros. So this can go one, two, three, four, five, six places to the right. And I'm gonna end up with the number five million. All right, so additionally, I want you to recall that we have a shortcut to evaluate 10 raised to a whole number that's one or larger. So 10 cubed is what? It's a one followed by three zeros, one, two, three. So if I multiply by 10 cubed, or if I multiply by 1,000, I'm moving the decimal point three places to the right because I have one, two, three zeros there, right? So the exponent is three. That gives me the number of zeros in that power of 10. So 10 to the fourth, that's a one followed by one, two, three, four zeros. That's 10,000. 10 to the ninth is a one followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. So that is one billion. So I have here basically if we multiply a number by 10 raised to a positive integer, we move the decimal point to the right by the number of places equal to the exponent. So for example, if we have 7.3 times 10 to the fifth power, this number right here, I can just copy it, 7.3. I'm multiplying by 10 to the fifth power. So I'm multiplying by a power of 10 with what? Five zeros. So the decimal point just goes five places to the right. So let me go ahead and add four zeros behind that three, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five places to the right. And my decimal point would be there. So I'd end up with 730,000. What about 6.829 times 10 to the fourth? Again, just copy this number right here, 6.829, and I'm multiplying by 10 to the fourth. So the exponent is four, if I was to evaluate 10 to the fourth power, it'd be a one followed by four zeros. That power of 10 would tell me to move this decimal point four places to the right if I'm multiplying by that. So this would go one, two, three, put a zero behind that nine, four places to the right. And so I'd end up with 68,290. So additionally, we have a similar trick when dividing by 10 or a positive integer power of 10. So dividing by 10 or a 10 raised to a whole number one or larger. So we're gonna move the decimal point one place to the left for each zero in the power of 10. Now if I'm multiplying by 10 or a 10 raised to a whole number one or larger, I'm just moving the decimal point one place to the right for each zero in the power of 10. So it's left for division, right for multiplication. So for example, I have 64 divided by 100. I'll take 64, put a visible decimal point here, I've got two zeros, so this is gonna go one, two places to the left, and I'll end up with 0.64, or a lot of people would like to write 0 
but about 128,000 over 1,000. One trick is to cancel zeros. So in other words, I can take this and cancel with this. Every time I'm doing that, I'm removing a factor of 10. So I'm canceling this with this, this with this, and I'll end up with 128 over one. But another way I could have done that, another way I could have done that is just writing 128,000. Put my decimal point here. I've got one, two, three zeros. So I would move this one, two, three places to the left. And again, I'd end up with the number 128 either way. What about 64 times 10 to the power of negative one? We learned about negative exponents in our last lesson. So this would be 64 times 10 to the power of negative one is 1 tenth, right? It's one over 10 to the power of one, so 1 tenth. And so essentially here you have 64 divided by 10. And so I can do this as saying, okay, I have 64, put the decimal point at the end, and then move this one place to the left because I have one zero here. So this would end up being 6.4. So let's revisit a problem real quickly. We have 128,000 times 10 to the power of negative three. We've done this a few examples ago, but it just looked different. We have 128,000 times 10 to the power of negative three is one over 10 cubed or one over 1,000, right? So I can really write this as 128,000 over 1,000 or 10 cubed. So really, again, I'm taking 128,000 and I'm taking my decimal point, I'm moving it three places to the left. One, two, three. That's gonna give me the number 128. So for the next one, I have 5.476 times 10 to the power of negative four. So do I need to keep writing this as 5.476 times one over 10 to the fourth power? I don't. Because what I need to realize here is that I'm just going to take, if I have a negative exponent on 10, okay, something like negative four, all that's going to end up happening is I'm going to take this value here and I'm going to move my decimal point four places to the left, right? If it's a negative four, if it was a negative seven, I'd move it seven places to the left. If it was a negative 12, I'd go 12 places to the left. So really all I need to do is write this number 5.476. And then look at that and say, okay, it's a negative. So that means I'm going to go to the left and then by four places, right? Because the exponent is negative four. So this would go one, two, three, four places to the left. Right there. You'd have 0 0.0005476 as your answer. And if you wanted to, you could do that the, the long way. You could have written this as 5.476 times one over 10 to the fourth power I said okay i have 5.476 over 10 to the fourth power and said okay well i have four zeros in this power of 10 that i'm dividing by so yeah this is going to be 5.476 this is going to move one two three four places to the left but again the way i showed you a minute ago was much much quicker i don't have all this tedious stuff i've got to go through all right, now that we've reviewed everything, let's talk a little bit about scientific notation. So it's kind of easy to do this. The first thing you want to do is place the decimal point to the right of the first non-zero digit in the number. So if the number was, let's say, 672, the first non-zero digit means coming from the left and going to the right. This is non-zero, so it's going to the right of that first digit. So that's where my decimal point's going to go. If I had something with a bunch of zeros, let's say I had point zero 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 two seven five zero six this is going to get moved to right there ignore the zeros you're coming from the left and going to the right so it's to the right of the first non-zero digit it's got to go right there okay so that's kind of your first step with scientific notation now the second thing you're going to do is count the number of places the decimal point was moved this will be the absolute value for the exponent on 10. So again, count the number of places you moved that decimal point. So let's say I had something like 682. Well, my decimal point is here and I'm gonna move it here, right? Because I'm moving it immediately after the first non-zero digit, so it's gonna go there. So it went one, two places to the left. So I'm gonna say, okay, the number that I'm looking for is a two. That's gonna be the absolute value for the exponent on 10. 
or something like 0 0.00000812. This is gonna go here, right? I'm gonna move it one, two, three, four, five, six places to the right. So the absolute value for the exponent on 10 will be a six in this case. Now step three, the exponent is positive if the original number is larger than the new number formed. Then the exponent is negative if the original number is smaller than the new number formed. And that's gonna make sense once we start doing some examples. And then for step four, we just set up the scientific notation as a times 10 to the power of n, where a is the number formed in step one, right? Where we had put a decimal point after the first non-zero digit. Then n is gonna be the exponent. We got that in step two, right? We counted the number of places that we had to move our decimal point, And in step three, we figured out what the sign was gonna be. Now I know these steps, when you kind of just read them out loud and you don't really have an example, it seems like, man, it's gonna be really difficult. You practice 10 or 15 of these, you're, you're gonna really have this down packed. It's super, super easy. All right, let's take a look at an example. So we have 96 million, and we wanna write this in scientific notation. So the first thing is, again, you wanna place the decimal point to the right of the first non-zero digit in the number. So coming from the left, going to the right, the first non-zero digit is a nine, so I'd put the decimal point right there. So it would be 9.6. You'd have all these zeros after the six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. But the question is, do I wanna write them? Well, they don't add any value to the number, so you don't have to. You might be asking, why don't they add any value to the number? Remember, we have a decimal point here now. So after your decimal point and the final non-zero digit, the zeros don't matter. They don't add any value. So you can just erase them. You don't need them. You just have that number 9.6. Now, these two are not equal yet, but they're going to be. Now, the next thing I wanna do is count the number of places the decimal point was moved. Well, it was moved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. So my exponent on 10, the absolute value of it is seven. Absolute value is seven. So I'm gonna multiply this by 10. I know the absolute value of the exponent will be seven. But will it be positive or will it be negative? Knowing the absolute value is not enough. Well, again, in step three, I told you the exponent is positive if the original number is larger than the new number. Here's the original number, 96 million. Here's the number that we form, 9.6. So clearly this is bigger, so the exponent would need to be positive. So this is gonna be positive seven, and we're done. Right? We've written it in the form described in step four, which is a times 10 to the nth power. Now a couple of pointers for you here. The first thing is that you don't need to go through this elaborate process every time. To get your sign for your exponent, just think about, okay, if I'm here, 9.6, and I wanna to get to here, 96 million, what I need to multiply by a power of 10 that's gonna tell me to move my decimal point to the right or the left. Remember, if this is positive, I'm gonna be moving my decimal point to the right. If it's negative, I'm gonna be moving my decimal point to the left. I wanna move this seven places to the right. I wanna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places to the right so I can get back this original number of 96 million. So 96 million written in scientific notation is 9.6 times 10 to the seventh power. All right, let's take a look at this one. We have point zero 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 eight five zero one six. So I'm gonna move this guy to immediately after the first non-zero digit, so after that eight, so it's gonna end up right there. So this is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna have eight point five zero one six all the zeros that preceded that eight i'm going to delete i don't add any value to the number anymore then i'm going to multiply this by 10 raised to what power well how far did i move the decimal point one two three four five six seven eight now do i want 10 to the eighth power or 10 to the power of negative eight well i clearly want 10 to the power of negative eight because if i want to go from this right here, which is a larger number, to this, which is a smaller number, this decimal point has to move to the left. So this needs to be a negative eight, right? Because I want that decimal point to go to the left. So if I have this number with this decimal point here, 
0, 1, 6, and I multiply it by 10 to the power of negative 8, this is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places to the left, put me right back where I started with this number that's 0 0.000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 085016. What about 78 trillion 994 billion? Well, again, I want to put my decimal point immediately after the first non zero digit. So that's after that seven. And then I'm going to write the eight, the nine, the nine, and then the four. These zeros I can just delete. I don't need them. They don't add any value to the number now because my decimal point is here. Now, how far did I move the decimal point? Well, it went from here to here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 places. So times 10 to the power of, do I want positive 13 or negative 13? Well, again, this original number is bigger. So in order to get from the smaller value to the bigger value, I need that exponent to be positive. So this is going to be positive 13. So this will be 7.8994 times 10 to the 13th power. What about something like 0.321? Well, I'm going to move this decimal point to right after the first non-zero digit. First non-zero digit is a 3, so it's going to basically just go one place to the right. So this is going to be 3.21, and then times 10. My exponent here is going to be negative 1. It went one place to the right, so I need to move it one place to the left to get back. Right. So this is a bigger number, the 3.21. Then the original number, the 0 0.321, so we need a negative exponent here. Again, negative 1 tells me to take this decimal point and move this one place to the left. So we end up with 3.21 times 10 to the power of a negative 1. All right, what about 15,065,000? Again, put the decimal point immediately after the first non-zero digit, so 1.5. 0, 065, and I can delete those zeros, I don't need them. And then times 10 raised to what power? So we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places to the left. So in order to get back, I need to go to the right. The original number is bigger, my exponent's going to need to be positive. So this would be 10 to the 7th power, right? Positive 7. So you'd end up with 1.5065 times 10 to the 7th power. All right, let's take a look at 0 0.0001095. So again, move the decimal point to immediately after the first non-zero digit. So it's going to go right there. So this would be 1.095, then times 10, raised to what power? Well, this went 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the right. So then to get back there, I'd have to go 4 places to the left. So I want a negative 4 as my exponent. Again. If the original number is smaller than this number that I'm forming here, the exponent's going to be negative, right? So I end up with negative 4. If I took my decimal point there and I moved it four places to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'd end up back with what I started with. So you get 1.095 times 10 to the power of negative 4. All right, so let's try writing a few without exponents. You want to go back and forth, get as much practice as you can. And so this would be, take this number here, 1.9051. I'm multiplying by 10 to the fifth power, so I'm moving five places to the right. So let me add a zero here. This is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places to the right. And I'm going to end up with 190,510. What about 3.56 times 10 to the power of negative 9? So 3.56. And I'm going to move this decimal point nine places to the left. Again, that negative is telling me to go to the left, and the nine says nine spaces. So let me go ahead and put in eight zeros here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, finally nine. And so I'm going to end up with. 0 0.000000000356 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 as my answer. What about 1.205 times 10 to the third power? Well, again, just take this number, 1.205, and we're going to move the exponent three places to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 
It's going to end up right there. You're going to end up with 1,205 as your answer. What about 6 times 10 to the power of 0? Well, we know anything to the power of 0 is 1, so this is basically 6 times 1 or 6. And just for future reference, this is how you're going to write a single digit number in scientific notation. Your teacher might say, how do you write 4 in scientific notation? Well, you put 4 times 10 to the power of 0. Or how do you write 13 in scientific notation? 13 times 10 to the power of 0. Because in each case, you're just multiplying by 1, right? Anything to the power of 0 other than 0 is 1. So we can also perform operations with numbers in scientific notation. There are different ways to kind of go about it. You have 1.17 times 10 cubed times 1.3 times 10 squared. So kind of the simplest or the easiest way to do this is to say, okay, I have 1.17 times 1.3. Kind of do that first. That would give you 1.521. Now, 10 cubed times 10 squared, you would use the product rule for exponents. So you'd have 10 as your base that would stay the same. 3 plus 2 is 5. So this would end up being 1.521 times 10 to the fifth power. We know this would be 1.521 move the decimal point five places to the right. So let me put in two zeros here. This would go one, two, three, four, five places to the right. And so you're gonna end up with 152,100. All right, what about 2.7 times 10 to the power of negative two? This is multiplied by two times 10 to the power of two, or two times 10 squared. Well, again, you would multiply the numbers first, two times 2.7, that's gonna give you 5.4. And then with this one, you have 10 to the power of negative 2 times 10 squared. What is that really if you look at it? Well, that's 10 squared over 10 squared, or it's just 1. And you can see that using your product rule for exponents, you'd keep the base the same, which is 10, and you'd raise it to the power of negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. 10 to the power of 0 is 1. So this is really 5.4 times 1, which is 5.4. All right, what about 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 3? over 2 times 10 to the power of 1. So you could do 1.8 divided by 2 first. That would give you 0.9. And then you would multiply this by, use your quotient rule for exponents. You have 10 to the power of negative 3 over 10 to the power of 1. So times 10 to the power of negative 3 minus 1. So this would be equal to 0.9 times. You would have 10 raised to the power of negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So then to completely finish this off, You'd have 0.9. If I have 10 to the power of negative 4, I need to move this four places to the left. So let me put 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros in. This would go 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the left. So I'd end up with 0.00009 as my answer.